Okay, so let's look at probability with permutations and combinations. Remember, probability is just the desired number of outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. The difficulty comes in actually figuring out what those numbers are when we have more complex scenarios. So this has two different types of questions. The first one in this exercise is one like this. You have 10 students in a class, seven boys and three girls. If the teacher picks a group of four at random, what is the probability that everyone in the group is a boy? Now, we could diagram this out, but it gets large. At each point, you have 10 students to choose from, and then 9 students to choose from, and then 8 students to choose from, and so forth. And we want them all to be boys, so that's a lot of diagramming. We can use factorials to figure this out, because a factorial tells me how many ways I can arrange or order a group of objects. So in this case, I'm going to work this problem two ways. One, using factorials to figure out the amounts. And two, using basic probability, which I think is easier. So we're going to do it second. But first, using factorials. So my probability, the number of desired outcomes over the total outcomes, is going to be that I choose four boys, which is going to be seven choose four. No, seven choose four. Then the total number of outcomes is 10 choose four. Notice, there are seven boys. So I need to figure out, well, how many ways can I choose four of them out of that group of seven? And then, since there are 10 students, I need to know the total number of ways that I can choose four students out of the 10. So that together, this will tell me the probability of choosing four boys out of 10 students. Now, we're not going to use quite the combination formula, but what it's going to boil down to is 7 factorial over 3 factorial. Getting rid of the ones we did not choose, just leaving the ones we did choose. And 10 factorial over 6 factorial. And then simplifying that by division of fractions, so we have 7 factorial over 3 factorial times 6 factorial over 10 factorial. And then by properties of factorials, where I'm going to expand the larger factorial and cancel some things out, I know that 10 factorial is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7, so I can cancel that. So working this out, we would have 6 factorial over 10 times 9 times 8. We cancel the 7 and then times 3 factorial. And then I'm going to use the 6 factorial to cancel the 3 factorial. So 6 times 5 times 4, and then there's my 3 factorial. So on the top, I'd get 6 times 5 times 4 and then that would cancel out there. And on the bottom, 10 times 9 times 8. So then we would look at these and just multiply them through. 6 times 5 times 4 and 10 times 9 times 8. Which is 120. And 
then on the bottom here, 10 times 9 times 8, 720. And then we can just find out that. Reduce me at 120 over 720. 1 sixth. Now, the other way to look at it would just be to actually look at our probabilities. There are seven boys in a class of 10, three of them are girls. So for the first choice, it's 7 tenths times 6 out of 9 times 5 out of 8 times 4 over 7. That's our four choices. 7 out of 10, 6 out of 9, 5 out of 8, 4 out of 7. And then we would multiply those together. Now, in this case, I'm not using the factorial. I'm just looking at each individual selection and seeing its probability. In the first choice, the first student picked, I have 7 boys out of 10. So my probability of choosing a boy is 7 out of 10. But then, once that first selection is done, there are six boys left and nine students total. So the probability of getting a boy on the second selection, six out of nine. And then continuing that pattern down, what we end up with is still going to be one-sixth. So there is a one in six chance that after the teacher has randomly selected these four students, all of them will be boys. One out of six. Now this particular exercise only has two types of problems. It's either going to be talking about you're selecting students in a class and you want all of them to be a particular gender for some reason, or you're flipping a coin and you want to get exactly two, three, four tails or heads. So exactly a number of them. So let's look at how this works. In this case, we are flipping a coin four times. So one, two, three, four events. Of those events, I want two of them to be tails, which means the other two remaining would be heads. To figure out the probability, though, I need to figure out how many ways can this occur, that we have exactly two tails and two heads, and how many ways are there for the coin to be flipped four times. So we'll deal with the, the first one, the probability of exactly two tails. We need the desired outcomes. And for that, we're going to use our factorials. The number of ways four events could occur is four factorial. The number of ways four events could be arranged, I should say. And because these are the same and these are the same, we're going to divide their ordering's out. Because if this tails and this tails switch places, it doesn't count, and if this head and this head switch places, that wouldn't count. So we need to divide that out. So what this ends up as is 4 times 3 over 2, canceling the 2 factorial down there, and that is 6. 4 times 3 is 12, divided by 2 is 6. So there are 6 ways that we could get exactly 2 tails. There are 6 desired outcomes. But now we need to figure out the total number of outcomes. Okay. 
So for this, I don't need to know how many ways four objects can be arranged. I need to know how many options I have for each event. And because it's a coin, it's just two. This one could have been heads or tails. 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 So every event has two possible outcomes. So to find the total number of outcomes, we're just going to multiply those together. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Or 2 to the 4th, which is 16. 16 total outcomes, 6 of them, will give me the desired outcome of exactly 2 tails. And so we can reduce that to 3 eighths. So even though we want exactly two tails and exactly two heads, and you might think, oh, it's 50-50, half and half. Turns out the actual probability is a little less than half. It's three-eighths. Yep. So again, that's kind of how statistics works. In some cases, it can show us that our assumptions are flawed. So even though we think, well, if I flip a coin four times, the probability of exactly two of them being tails is one half. It's not the case. Remember, these two also have a 50% chance of being tails. So the probability of exactly two tails and no other tails is actually a little bit less because these, you have to take into account that they have a pretty good likelihood of being tails as well. Yeah. Now, that's the last one, all you've got. So everything that's on Khan Academy is all you've got to do for the year. Tomorrow, I will post the last test, which will just be on the probability. So you're looking at basic probability, permutations, combinations, uh, probability with permutations, and combinations. That's really it. And you will have to the end of the year to get that done. My focus the rest of the year will just be making sure you guys are staying caught up, making contact with people who are behind. If you have any questions, email me. If you need help with anything, email me. We can set up a time to meet on Google, Google Meet. Uh, during normal school hours, but email me so I can set that up if you need any additional help. Otherwise, this is the last video that I will post, at least based on curriculum. So, all right, guys, good luck. Again, if you need anything, email me. I'll put that up on the board real quick, just so we have it. Although all of you should have it, because it's in the syllabus. And you can get me through Skyward. Yeah. Hope all of you are staying safe and are well. Have a great summer. If I don't see you before then, which I shouldn't because of quarantine. All right, guys. We'll see you next time.